Well, hey, my friends, I'm so glad that you are with me today. I've got a great friend of mine who I've known for, gosh, a lot of years now, who is uh, over in Cyprus doing some incredible work with artists and uh, evangelism and just reaching people for Jesus. Jaren, I'm so glad that you are with me today. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's a great opportunity for me to talk today. Absolutely, absolutely. Take just a moment for those folks who uh, may not know who you are yet and uh, just kind of introduce yourself and let everybody know what you're doing in the world. And... Yeah, I, well, my name is Jörn Lange. I'm German originally, but I've lived in Cyprus for, well, we're in our 14th year now. Wow. With my wife and six children. I work with Youth with a Mission, actually, and I lead a ministry called Kadosh Art, which means holy art or art orientated towards the Lord. Yeah. And we do two things. Basically, we do outreach. That's one arm. And we do training. That's another. So for outreach, I mean, we're an island. So we go to the seafront and we draw prophetically for people. It's all spontaneous drawings. We tell them it's five minutes. And we have seen in the last 14 years that God speaks to people, that yeah. they can realize that he's real and that they can connect with him through art and i find it a fascinating opportunity to basically share the gospel with them yeah yeah i'm thinking uh you know as people are, are saying oh yeah i recognize that name guys if you have uh read the book that i did last year called prophetic art you'll see one of Yarn's stories in there and a reference to his great book uh, on prophetic art and the biblical origins of that, which we'll be talking a little bit about today. But um, I was trying to think, Jern, it's, how many years has it been, I wonder, since we met? Because we met in Scotland. No, we met in Germany first, and then you came to Scotland for a gathering of artisans. But gosh, that's been how many nine years? years nine years, I think. Yeah. yeah. We went to, yeah, I, I went to one of the workshops that, that you did yeah. In, uh, in in Duisburg with Myra, one yeah. of my art mentors. And that's yeah. where we met first. So crazy. So crazy. I'm not getting older. I don't know about you, but I'm just, you know. <laughs> you have to ask my wife for that, but I don't know what her answer is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I love your YWAM connection. I'm actually getting ready to go at the time of this recording. I'm going to be teaching over in Kona at the School of oh, Illustration. Cool. And so really excited about that. But just all the incredible things that, that they're doing all over the world. Talk about a little bit about your art journey personally and when you started realizing that, hey, this is not something that I just do for fun. This is There's actually a God connection in this. And when did you start to sense that as an artist? Well, I have to say I'm one of those who say, well, I didn't do anything for like 25, 30 years. Yeah. Um, I originally um, trained as a banker and I worked in that for 25 years. And then we came to Cyprus and started a house of prayer. And three years into that, so when I was in my mid 40s, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my wife gave me um, pastels, pastel chalk, and art paper for Christmas. And I unwrapped it and I said, What's this? And she said, Well, it's chalk and paper and i kind of said well i see that but why yeah and she said well i thought god told me that i should give it to you for christmas and i said mm. oh thank you <laughs> yeah and put it on the shelf and then three months later i felt god say that i should take the pastels and the paper to our regular um open worship evening at the house of prayer and i said to do what and he said well to draw and my answer was, well, I can't draw. Yeah, yeah. And for me, that was the end of it. But God kept, in, kept insisting. And to cut a long journey short, I spent a whole year taking the pastels and paper every week and kept drawing. And it was a year where God said, I want to restore art to you. And I said, do you want to restore art to me? Why, why that? What is yeah, that for? Yeah. And basically, every painting I did brought healing to me as a person, which was, I found it totally amazing and fascinating. Yeah. I never seen anything like it. And after the year was gone, I was in the house of prayer at one of our evenings and I was drawing. 
and the drawing didn't speak to me. And that was the first time. And I looked at it and I said in prayer, Lord, what is this? Why is yeah. this not speaking? Am I not listening? Am I doing something wrong? Yeah. And I felt him say, no, this is not for you. This is for someone else. Mm. Um, a person who is here tonight, I want you at the end of the evening to go over to them, um, show them the painting, give it to them and explain what I want to say to them. Yeah. And I think I said out loud, you must be kidding. I'm not going <laughs> to do that. I mean, <laughs> So I argued with him, and I still do that today. I usually lose. Yeah, that always works say. out well, doesn't it? <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the evening, I went over. It was the young lady. I showed her the painting. I explained what I had understood. She started crying, which really embarrassed me. But she accepted what I said, and she took it. And I'm still in contact with her mother, who says, yeah, the painting is still on my daughter's bedroom wall. Wow. And that was basically the start of seeing this as a ministry, not as something that is just for me or that is just for, for fun or for having a good time. Yeah. And God continued to challenge me and to develop things. And over the next two years, I think two years after was the time when we met for the first time, I, I started to draw for people i started to organize exhibitions i've never done an exhibition my goodness i think i lost five kilos in organizing it <laughs> because i was sweating my head off constantly um and then we developed workshops um we had teams over we started the outreach i mean all the stuff that we're involved in now as a team yeah. started with that basically with a christmas gift which was totally out of the blue for me yeah i just i love that you know, I love also that you having been a banker and, you know, a detail guy and wanting to get into the nitty gritty, as we say, you know, it, it, of the details, it seems that you're, you've also equally been fascinated with, Lord, I understand that this art is an expression. I understand this art is having an impact, but I want to mm -hmm. know, like, the real basis of this, like, show me biblically. And so I, I remember when we first met, you are the kind of person that asks deep questions. You are the kind of person yeah. that wants a deep answer. You want to get to the foundations. And I so appreciate that. I remember, uh, was it your first book about intercession and uh, yes. and art and, and prophetic art and that sort of thing? And then this one that's, that's come out about the biblical foundations of, of prophetic art. But when did that start for you? Because it seems like, you know, you're starting to have an experience, but then you were even driven further into saying, I want to find out the biblical basis for this, because a lot of people can think, oh, prophetic art, this is this, this fringe thing that's, you know, not really biblical, and it's just a thing that charismatics like to do or whatever. So talk about a little bit about that, because you really have a passion, I know, for that. Um, I, I have been asked, and asked is a positive formulation, not to say I have been attacked sometimes. <laughs> um, because people said, oh, this is a new development. I, I don't see it in scripture. Yeah. And so I had questions like, hmm, where do I find it? But a few years ago, I went to a nation in Western Asia where the church is not official. Um, they had a hundred hour worship time, which wow. was very impressive for me. Wow. And they asked me if I could come and paint prophetically. So the leaders who organized this were very aware of what that was. I said, yes, we took a team and I painted and people had never seen it. So I gave paintings away. I prayed for people, God ministered to them. And they said, what is this? So I started explaining it and they asked the same questions, but they asked because they had never seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Where do I find this? How can you say this is prophecy? They had heard prophecy, words of encouragement, words of knowledge, but I had never seen it visualized. So from that experience, I came home and I started praying and I said to the Lord, well, I need to find out more about where it is. And people said, well, can you dance prophetically? Can you make music prophetically? Can you sculpt prophetically? I mean, I'm not a painter, yes. I'm not an artist. And I said, wait a moment. No, you're not a painter, but if you sculpt, if you dance, if you yep. write, if you sing, if you 
compose, if you work with fabric, yes, you're an artist. Just, yeah. you know, try to get your mind around this. Yeah. And so I basically started on a journey to dig into the Old Testament and the New Testament to see, well, where are these forms of art expressed and where are they prophetic? And yeah. how, how does prophetic art in the Old Testament foreshadow something that happens in the New? And that's basically how the book came about, because yeah. I wanted to give people something they can take to make, you know, to be informed themselves and to enter into what I call informed conversations mm. so that they, if somebody asks, and even if they ask because they want to know and not because they think they know the answer, yeah. that people can give informed answers and can say, well, if you really want to know, look into Exodus chapter so and so. Look into yeah. the tabernacle. Look into um, Genesis one two. The spirit hovering over the water. If you look into the Hebrew, it's a fast movement. So you could say the spirit danced on the water. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the second verse of the Bible. <laughs> so if you are if you're aware of that, you can calmly and lovingly talk to people and point them in the right direction. And basically, you know, that's what I do, invite them on a journey of discovery for themselves yeah. if they are really interested. Yeah, it's so good because I, I think, you know, sometimes you do get people that are like, you know, just push back in general on, on art. But I think many times people are interested. They're just wanting to know, hey, I, like you said, I just, I've never heard this before. I, I want to know what this is. And even for artists, I know for so many of the artists that I work with in our mentoring program and that sort of thing, when you talk about this idea of co-laboring with the Holy Spirit and, and regardless of what medium it, it is that you, you yeah. practice, you know, this is an invitation for, for all of us. And I would say that it's the invitation to the kingdom, right? To see and agree with heaven, to to cooperate with whatever God's wanting to do. We just we have the privilege of doing that through our art because we're, you know, that's how we're, how we're wired. I'm interested for you, Yaron, how do you, uh, as you're in the studio and, and creating, are you, well, first of all, are you creating in the studio or are you primarily creating in outreaches and that sort of thing? And do you always approach uh, you as a, a painter? Are you always approaching the canvas with a clear intent or is it many times you're just, coming uh, with the intention to hear the Lord in a spontaneous way? Well, I have to say it's both. Um, I have fixed hours that I go to the studio and create, because if I don't put it in the schedule, it doesn't happen. Right. You know, right. I said I have, I have a wife and six kids and yeah. I have a life yeah, sure. other than art. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and in the last, I mean, in the last two years, we weren't able to do that much outside because we were restricted to even leave the house. And I was glad I could actually leave the house and go to the studio and create. Yeah. There are some, some times when I create a painting, when I, I basically see what I have to do. And I can put a sketch on the canvas and I can work on it and it appears. Yeah. And there are other times when God just gives me a part or he gives me a color and he says, do a certain background, yeah, put yeah. this here, put that here. And then he stops and I'm like, so uh, <laughs> what's not a painting? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and he might not say anything and he might just have me put it aside and not work on it. Sure. Um, I had a painting in one of my solo exhibitions in November that I worked on for over half a year and it changed and changed and changed. And finally, when I felt, okay, he said, it's done. You could see through seven layers of, of different media. Mm. And I mean, that stuff doesn't come as a vision. Yeah. I start with something and then I put something on, I change something and I, I have it stand in the, in the shelf for a month and when I come in the studio and pray, God might say, okay, I want you to work on that one today. So yeah. then I pick it up and I do the next thing. Yeah. So each painting basically has its own story, how it came about. And I often, I have to say, don't know who it is for. Yeah. And I've had, have, I've had things that I did. And then two years later, after the painting 
was just stored in the studio, God said, okay, for this event or for that trip, I want you to take this and I will do something with it. And for me, it's, it really boils down to a question of obedience, yeah. of listening to God. And if he says, do this much, then to step back and to say, okay, I might have 10 other ideas what I could do with this and what I could add and what it should look like. Yeah. But to really step back and to say, he didn't say anything else. It's not finished. I leave it. And yeah. I don't add my own understanding, my own vision, my own, what I think looks nice or whatever. And just wait until he speaks about it again. Yeah, I love that. You know, I'm really passionate about, you know, there's helping artists uh, grow their businesses as artists and, and that sort of thing. Not only connecting with the Lord, and that's kind of what the Lord had done in my life. And although at the same time, I always try to let artists know, hey, selling your art commercially does not define you as a successful artist or not. And I think that's one of the reasons I love having artists like you on the podcast is because you've really <laughs> taken a very different route with your art. It is yeah. is purely ministry. Um, you give a lot of your art away. You've chosen to uh, develop your uh, financial backing and that sort of thing through the context of, of ministry. So talk about that because I think it's an important model for artists out there to realize, hey, there are lots of different ways to to be an artist. And just because you're not receiving uh, part or all of your income through the sales of your art does not mean that you're not a real artist or that God can use you in a, in a powerful way. Yeah. I mean, uh, I had a longer process where I thought, well, what is God telling me to do? And people have asked me, well, don't you have to be, you know, an artist in the church? Um, or do you have to be an artist in the kingdom? Um, or in the marketplace, or yeah. where. Sure. And for me, I said at the beginning, I work with Youth with a Mission, right. which means my, my end goal is to have people make a decision to follow Jesus. My end goal is to introduce them to a God who loves them and who embraces them and who made them and knows them. Um, and I did that when I was in Germany, half, half. So for instance, I went part-time at the bank where I had worked for over 20 years already, which for them was a revolution. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I worked on getting donations to basically pay the other half of my income. But when we came to Cyprus, it was totally clear, I basically follow the model that Youth of the Mission has, yeah. which means that well, you could say you live by faith. Yeah. We have a budget. We have people who donate every month so that we can pay our bills. But if we want to, you know, if we want to do projects, if we want to, if I want to take a trip, like when I went to Asia to paint, those are all things I do fundraising for. Yeah. And I explain to people what I do, why I think God is telling me to do it. And basically, you know, I invite them to be part of my team. Yeah. First of all, by praying, we have many more people who pray for us rather than who give to our ministry. And then secondly, to also give financially. And I really try to have them understand that it's a team effort. Yes, we're here in Cyprus. I mean, we might be, we went to Israel, we went to um Morocco, we went to Egypt, we went further east. Yeah. So I am in those locations, but I can only do it because they are part of a team and they are, for better use of a word, they are the sending part of the yes, team. Yes. And again, for me, it boils down to obedience. I mean, I do sell art sometimes. I do workshops and there are some workshops I am getting paid for. That's great. But it is a question of obedience. Am I listening to God and am I doing what he tells me to do? And am I able to explain that to others so that they come on board, so that they feel part of a team and that they basically feel that they can have an impact where they can't go themselves through me and through my team and through what we are doing. 
Yeah. And it was quite a process for me because I had to get, um, I had to step over some parts of my ego <laughs> <laughs> to, you know, to not say, well, I produce and I can do this and I can do that. Sure. Um, but to say, well, I myself need to step back and basically put, put God and what he does into the foreground, whether I understand it or not, or whether I like it or not. I mean, there have been a lot of situations where I felt way out of my comfort zone. Um, the first time I conducted a workshop, oh my goodness, I think <laughs> most of the gray hairs from that, you know? <laughs> um, but ministering and relying on God providing for what we need, you know, we're eight yeah. people, yeah, that's sure. not just, um, and to rely on him to provide everything that we need to run programs, to reach out, to buy art materials, I mean, to pay for a studio. Yeah. It's a, it was a huge step of faith for the whole family. And yeah, I can only say it is a, it is a model that works because yeah. it comes from the Lord. But you need to be really sure that God is telling you to live yeah. this way and not another way. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there a project that's on your heart right now that you're planning? And I know you've always got something cooking that you're <laughs> that you're moving toward. Um, well, I'm in the process of publishing my first book in German, which will be um, a devotional about God as an artist. Oh, cool. Maybe next year we'll be there in English. I don't know yet, but we're yeah. working on it. Yeah. Um, but I'm planning a bigger exhibition this year with the topic of forgiveness. And while well, you might know and you might not know it, Cyprus is a divided nation. So half of the nation is under occupation. Okay. And people have been divided and cut off from families on the other side mm. for over 40 years. Wow. So there's actually a lot of unforgiveness in Cyprus as a nation and in people. There's still a lot of bitterness even after 40 years. And I'm planning this exhibition. I'm working on getting a team of prophetic artists, locals together, who will do you know, paintings, mixed media, sculpture. Um, we might have someone doing installation, all with this topic to use the art to reach people because I've said many times that art bypasses the mind. Yeah, yeah. So even if we do outreach, if you go and talk to people and say, let me tell you something, or let's talk about Jesus, or let's talk about Christianity, their wall goes down because yeah. they think, oh, I want to tell them they're wrong or I'm right, right or whatever. Right. But if we come as artists and invite them basically into a journey with art when we put on an exhibition, they, you know, simply yet speak art as a language. Yes. They have art everywhere. They have studios. You can take courses. They know art. So it is a, a door that we can use right to their hearts so that they can they can come, they can engage with the art and then realize that something is happening, that God is speaking to yeah. them, that yeah. there is more than just the art. So that would be a really, um, probably a really challenging topic for our um, circumstances here in the nation. Yeah. But we're praying that we will pull that off. Well, we, God will pull it off. <laughs> um, probably September this year, because we need a lot of preparation. We need a lot of wisdom and we need a lot of prayer to do it right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love the fact, again, you're using creativity as this secret language, you know, to access people's hearts and, and really yeah. to give the Holy Spirit an invitation to, to speak to them in in a way and in a language that, that they can understand. So you and I love yeah. all that you're doing. You're an inspiration, not only in the country that you're serving in, but all over the world to, to so many artists. I know that folks are going to want to connect with you uh, and, and see more about what you're doing, grab your books, all that sort of thing. So where's the best place 
online that people can uh, connect with you and, and continue the conversation? Well, online, the best place at the moment is my Facebook page because yeah. um, I don't have my web page up and running yet, but that's another project we're working on. Yeah. So on Facebook, it's um, Jörn Lange Art. It's my name. And Jörn, because that's not even a German name, <laughs> is um, J-O-E-R-N. Okay. And then my last name and art, and they should find me. Great. And we'll be sure to put the link in the show notes so everybody can go right to that. And if people wanted to donate to what you're doing, because I want to definitely give artists who may feel impressed right now, as even as they're listening to to give and to sow into your ministry and what you're doing, where's the, the place that they can do that? Um, they can either do it via PayPal with my um, email address. Okay. Or if they are in the States and want it tax recognized, yeah. they, we, have a, we have a sending agency that also works in the States, um, which is called Globe Mission. Okay. Um, they can send me an email and I can send them the contact details and they Wonderful. can take it even off U.S. Texas if they need to. So Wonderful. Yeah, we want to send prayers, but we want to send money too. We love that to, <laughs> to bless you guys. And, you know, I love I love that, that be because great. why not? You know, that's God's God's doing all kind of things in, in prospering artists that are listening to this, and they may be looking for a place to to sow into what you're doing over there. And again, just as a way to to partner with you and and all that God's called you to. But Yaron, it's always a great to connect with you, my friend. And um, guys, definitely get his books and uh, connect with Yarn online and see all the great things that he's doing. And um, I can't wait to talk to you again and, and get an update on all the good things. So thanks my friend for being on the podcast today.